Oh, hello and prove it, peeps. You're my peeps, you're my peeps. I'm just having fun saying that word now. So I am so excited for today's show. We have the one, the only Jenna McDonald of Improve It on this podcast. And if you don't know Jenna, she is a staple here at Good Old Improve It. She is our director of client experience. She is the, a graduate of DePaul University. And through her corporate and nonprofit roles, she has extensive experience building client and community partnerships, managing events of all shapes and sizes, and bridging gaps for introverts just trying to make it in an extrovert's world. Now, as the director of client experience here, she has built relationships with amazing leaders at organizations, including Uber Freight, Adobe, Warby Parker, Primex, LinkedIn, Chegg, in addition to managing virtual and in-person events across North America, Europe, and India. She takes pride in helping bring accessible, impactful, and fun-filled programs to teams. Now, through our work here at Improve It, she once found herself uh, unexpectedly presenting to former President Barack Obama. And to answer your question, yes, it was the best moment of her life. So you can check out that episode. It's episode 28 of this show, what used to be the Failed It podcast. Uh, And she has a fantastic story. It's all about overcoming public speaking fear uh, by speaking to a former president. So... That is a quick bio of Jenna, but there's so much more. She is genuinely one of my pe- favorite people. I, she's one of my people. She's one of my favorite people on the planet. And I couldn't live or do this without her. She is truly a rock star. And I wanted to have her on the show today to talk to you about core values and how you can create them if you don't already have them, how you can use them to attract, how you can use them to retain top talent. So today's episode is going to be all about our core values process, how we determined them, how you can do this for your team, even if you're a large organization, examples of how you can incorporate core values into your interview process. And then we're going to give you five steps to attract and retain top talent by using your organization's core values. So listen in on this awesome episode, quick housekeeping item. If you haven't yet, I'm going to ask you a very important question. Could you please leave us a review on Apple iTunes? We are looking for reviews right now because we are trying to get more amazing, amazing guests on this show. That's the only way they know that our show is successful. So please take the time, go to Apple, iTunes, on your phone, scroll down, hit five stars on this podcast. You can write a little note or you can just give five stars, but it takes two seconds and would mean so much to us. With that said, we also have our hybrid hype handout. So if you are looking for ways to engage your team in this hybrid workforce, click on the link in the show notes. It's a free download just for you. All right, let's get to improving it with the one, the only Jenna McDonald. Are you a leader or change maker inside of your business, organization, or corporation? Are you looking for new, innovative ways to drive morale through the roof? Are you looking for fun and exciting icebreakers, team building exercises, and activities that will foster team growth, friendships, loyalty, and completely transform your organization from the inside out? Have you been searching for a fun and unique way to create change instead of the same old dry, boring leadership books and icebreakers that aren't actually working. Hi, I'm Erin Deal, business improv edutainer, fail fluencer, and professional zombie who is ready to help you improve it. My mission in life is to help you develop teams and leaders through play, improv, and experiential learning. In this podcast, we will deep dive into professional development, team building, effective communication, networking, presentation skills, leadership training, how to think more quickly on your feet, and everything in between. We have helped everyone from Fortune 500 companies to small mom and pop shops transform their business, their leadership, and their people through play. So grab your chicken hat. We are about to have some fun. Welcome to Improve It, the podcast. (laughs) 
Jenna McDonald. Welcome back to the Improve It podcast. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I thought you were going to sing with me for a moment. Oh, um, no. maybe later. <laughs> Just so everybody knows, I'm going to ruin a fun fact for you. Jenna is a great singer and guitar player. So, thank uh, you. <laughs> you're, oh, duh. You're welcome. So, you've had we've had you on the show before, but I want you to give. Uh, our Improve It peeps, an interesting fact about yourself. We've probably had you share other facts, but what's one thing besides the fact you're an amazing singer and guitar player that they should know? Um, I was thinking about this. I love the bakery um, named Milk Bar, and I really like to bake. And for my birthday this year, I made like a copycat gluten-free version of the cake that they're like famous for. And it took like a day and it was just really fun to bake. So I'm kind of, yeah, my obsession with this specific bakery <laughs> is a fun fact. Okay. Well, that's a fact that I didn't know. So wh- where was I on, on your birthday, April 10th? Hold on. <laughs> Milk bar, putting that in my notes. Okay. So tell everybody your role here at Improve It, what you do on the day to day. I'm the director of client experience. And that breaks down into a few different categories, Um, mainly uh, our business development function, helping us build relationships with leaders, a lot of L&D, a lot of HR leaders, but really leaders of all functions, um, building relationships with them and being able to bring in new partners for Improve It. But also, once we have all of our events, really managing those events, all the details. I love details. We've talked about this. Um, managing all the communication between our facilitators and our clients and the post-workshop, post-keynote, post-event follow-up to maintain the relationship. Um, Those are the two big parts. And then I also lead our uh, culture club, which is something that's a small initiative we've taken on internally. Um, And I think one of the perks that I that I really like of working at a small business is that there are a lot of other, you know, miscellaneous projects that don't fall into any of those categories that I get to work on depending on the day or the week or whatever else is going on. Oh my God. And literally she runs this ship. Okay. Like without Jenna, we would go down in a wave. We would go down. We would go (laughs) down. Um, But if you, if you inquire and to improve it, you're going to talk to Jenna and We're so grateful for all you do. You can, we'll talk about this later. You can go back and listen to an episode of this podcast to hear more about how it all got started. So let's, let's set an intention for today's show. We're going to talk about core values, how to hire, how to retain, how to attract talent using core values. So what is one word that you would want to get out of today's show? Um, I, I think reconnection is a word I'd like to work, I'd like to get out of this podcast recording. Reconnection to our core values or to what? Yeah, reconnection. Just, it's a good reminder. It's a, it's a good opportunity to just reflect on them again and just return to them. Yeah, so reconnect. I love it. I love it. So one thing that I love is that we've been at this together for so long you were an intern, so you can go back to this episode. I can't remember the name. I think I have it in these notes somewhere. I will I will pull it up. But you started out as an intern. Then you were the client experience associate, the client experience manager, now the client experience director. We've been through a pandemic, social unrest, all of it with the through line that we at Improve It want to make the world better than we found it. So just you know, very unloaded question. How do you think the work that we do here at Improve It is impacting the world? Hmm. I think that there are a few ways. I feel like the first way is maybe the most obvious because we we use improv in our work. But I think it's it's really special that we're able to come into these spaces that where people are, you know, at work. Um, and we're able to bring them laughter and see people just experience joy together. And that's so, I mean, now more than ever, that's so important to have. And I think we can forget about that when we're at work. So it's great to be able to remind people um, that they should have fun and that they should enjoy 
the, the people they're with and just laugh and the power of laughter. Um, and I think the other side is, and I say this all the time, but I'm, I'm like the ideal client of Improve It because I am one of the few people on our team who is not a performer. Um, and I've seen it impact me and I've seen it in the room where we're in a workshop and I've seen people just see and believe what they're capable of after we're in there with them. So I think we're able to just bring out the best in people. Like they already have all of this. It's just not at the front. So we're able to bring it kind of to the top when we're in our workshops. And I think that's a really big impact that we can bring. Jenna, Jenna, Jenna. I love it. And I, I think that I've told you this before. I've probably said it on the show. You are improve it. You are literally, I watched you come in and you were a college senior, going to graduate, unsure about the business world, confident, but let's just be honest, in sales and in talking to clients, there was like some trepidation in the beginning. And then you have just blossomed into this amazing professional. I mean, even yesterday, we got an email from a client and friend who I've known for a long time who's never talked to you. And she said, oh my God, I'm just blown away. And I sent that to you. Uh, just how amazing you are. So you are Improve It. And, and I think that's, you're like the walking, like billboard of Improve It because it is true. I love watching the work that we do transform people and just like, you're right, remind them of how great they are. They already know, they already had it in them. We just pull it out through improv and comedy. So, all right. Let's talk core values. We created them together. You were a part of this core value process. So do you remember that experience at all? Do you remember how it came to be? And can you walk us through it? I remember it, but I, I can help you out if you got if you if you need some 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 help. Yeah, I think I remember it. I mean, please correct me if this isn't how it went down, but we were um, I think it was back in the River North. It was the River North office, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why I need to place where we were, but it's it's helpful. It's important. Yeah. Can we can we give the <laughs> audience to the Improve It Peeps just a quick um, synopsis? It was a very large, it wasn't large, uh, office with a beautiful view of all of the ankles in Chicago because it was a lower level office, not to be confused with a basement. Um, beautiful views. We, we love looking at ankles. There was a variety of shoes in River North Chicago. Okay, keep going. There mm -hmm. we go. And there was an exercise machine in the office next oh, to us, God. which we don't have to don't have to go down that road, nope. but it was kind nope. of loud. Um, no, but I, I remember it as kind of we do post it sessions is like our version of it's brainstorming, but we like the visual of having post its and being able to like slap them on the wall and and look over them. So I remember we kind of I don't remember what prompts we used in the beginning to get going. Um, but we were really thinking about what values do we live out at Improve It? Because we just didn't have any core values like listed. Um, so we went through and we had so many ideas and we just it was the yes and concept. Like we just kept adding them. And eventually we were able to pare it down. I think I don't want to say like voting on them, but we had a discussion about each and every post it. And we realized that a lot of them fell into a certain category and we could maybe find a way to summarize that. Or some of them are values we have, but not core values. Um, so we got really like granular on what are core values. And we result we came up with five that came out of that list. And then we, after we had like the five key terms, key core values, we then broke them down into little taglines that that explained each and every one of them. And I don't remember how long the process took, but it definitely it was a lot of reflection and it was not it was not simple. Like we had a lot of we had a lot of ideas, so we had to pare them down to what mattered the most to us. Is that is that am I remembering it correctly? You are you are spot on. And okay. here's, you know, for people listening who um are wondering how can I do this? I I work in a large organization or I have a big team. We we are a small internal team. So yes, we have a large team 
tot- in totality from a facilitation perspective. Um, but behind the scenes, I think at that time we were about like five of us um, and we sat down and it, like Jenna said, we really broke it down. So if you're in a large organization and core values already exist, why not talk to leadership about reevaluating them? Because, excuse me, what I, my, my voice just sounds like Kermit the Frog, because, um, be, but I think one of the beautiful things was that we were able collectively to create these together. So I think that from, from a perspective of we sat down, we brainstormed what our values were, and then we realized, okay, we have a lot of shared themes. Then from these shared themes, we then broke them down into five, like you mentioned, and then gave each one of those taglines. And I think in my mind, what was beautiful is, okay, yes, I'm the founder of Improve It. And could I have sat down and created core values for me? Yes. But that, what is that going to do for anyone working within the organization? I think what was wonderful, and, and tell me what your thoughts on this, was that they were a collective shared group of values. They weren't just from me or from Allie at the time or from you. It was a collective group. So do you think having a group of maybe it's senior leaders, maybe it's an organization as a whole and you do some type of poll and collect shared themes that then your people department puts together the shared themes and creates values from, how important do you think it is to have input and buy-in from team members? I think it's so important. I mean, you're right. We are, we are so, we're small enough and you're right. You could have had them before. And I'm sure that that was a thought you had, but the fact that you included the whole internal team, like it was you, me, Allie and Christy sitting in that room doing the post-it note, it just felt it felt really like empowering for all of us to have like it it was leveling the playing field. We were all just sharing the input and we were able to come up with something together. And then, you know, we feel really connected to it because every, every single one of those values we share and we landed on that together. It wasn't like you told us these are our values and we share them. Um, And I get it. Like, I think that this is something that we might talk about a little later, but I, I, when there is a really traditional large company that has established values, it is completely different in how you can make an impact as an employee, especially an individual contributor, even a manager. Um, but I think if at all possible, having the input from employees to confirm and just remind them that this is a value that they don't just have on their own, but the company values it is really important. Um, and I think that that accountability is really important. I agree. I agree. And I do think it set the tone for moving forward. We have used these core values. We narrowed them down. We got super intentional. We made them a metric in our hiring process and a metric in our performance process. So let's start with the hiring process. When we bring somebody on internally, whether it's an intern, whether it's a facilitator, whether it's um, a marketing research person, whatever it is, if they're going to work for us, we hire based off these values. So can you give us some specific questions we've used to understand a candidate's competency when it comes to a specific core value? Yes. And it was so fun to go back to these. So I have an example from all five. Um, I can give if we want all five. Let's do it. So one of our values is play, learn and have fun. So we like to ask, what do you do for fun? And what do you do to release your inner child? Um, Which is a really fun question. That's a good one. Yeah. And then um, one of our values is lead with yes and. So how do you incorporate yes and into your daily life? Uh, A third core value of ours is everyday leadership. How would you define your leadership style and how do you prefer to be led? I really like that question, especially the last part. I love that question. I mean, truly that one. And and I will say everyday leadership is one of my favorite core values. 
because it just reminds me every time we, you know, and I love that reconnection is your word for this because it reminds me every time to go back to the why to be the leader I want to be led by. And I love to hear the response from people because everybody wants to be led differently, right? And it's it's just really interesting when you think about how all of this stemmed from a brainstorm, right? Okay, keep going, keep going. Yeah, Sorry, keep going. yeah, yeah. Um, explore more is our fourth core value. So how do you incorporate learning new things into your life? Mm. Mm. That, mm-hmm. one, that, one mm-hmm. is, that one's important too. Um, I mean, they're all important. And then our, our fifth core value is drive results. So what are some of your biggest goals you've ever accomplished? And how did you achieve them? So I really like the last part of that question. I, I like that all of these questions have some sort of how to them. It's not just yes. what, but it's like, how, how do you implement this? Like you gave an example, break it down for us to understand. Exactly. And then we measure this. So we listen to the in, the candidate's answer. And really what we're looking for is, I mean, they could say anything. We're just looking for an understanding that their values match or they have an understanding of the values that we have here. So, I mean, literally, if somebody says, you know, play, learn and have fun, they're like, I just like to sit and read. Well, great. But why do you like to sit and read? I like to sit and read because I like to gain new information. And I like it it calms me and makes me feel safe. And it is something that when I'm done with the workday, it brings me back to my joy. I love to get lost in a book. And, And so like, you know, that's, I like to read too, but that's probably not what I would answer. So I'm not looking for, we're not looking for the same answers that we would say. We are looking for a understanding of the core competency or the core value. And we are looking for, is this answer an understanding of who we want to represent our organization? Celebrating the differences in people wanting the differences to be seen through these answers, um, but an understanding. Was that, was, is that how you would describe how we look for an answer? Yes, absolutely. I'm so happy you said that because it's so important for us to have different perspectives and different life experiences and diversity on our team. So it's it's not that we're all the same. I think anyone who's met both of us or has been in the room with you and me together can realize that we are not all <laughs> the same at Improve It. Like we are very different people, but the values are the same. And it's, yeah. it's so different than saying like, we're all just copycats of each other. Um, we're not. We just, at the end of the day, what we're doing, the why is the same, but how we do it is different. And what we like to do in our free time is different. And you know, how we execute things. Like I said, that's all different, but why are we doing it? I think that is similar across the board. Yep. And when, when I'm listening to a candidate's response, I'm listening for a loss of ego. If I'm being honest, like I want them to be authentic and I want them to show me who they really are. But the work that we do here is so mission driven and so people forward and so people oriented that the people we bring in, we have to make sure anyone will automatically trust them because their values are a match to what we we are here to do on this earth. We are of a small, tiny, itty bitty corner of this earth. And we are trying to do the best that we can to leave a long lasting impact for it. And that is what we're looking for in these answers is, do you understand the core value? And what can you, what, what difference can you have in your answer, but with an understanding of what we're here to do? So let's talk performance because, you know, we've talked a lot about the hiring side. We do quarterly internal reviews here with us. Um, And we use core values as a metric to measure performance, to measure success. Can you tell us how we use them to measure performance? Yeah, we use, um, we call it like a rubric 
for feedback. And we list out those five values, the play, learn and have fun, lead with yes and, explore more, drive results and everyday leadership in this rubric. And we rate ourselves um, on a scale of one to five is how throughout that quarter, we felt how connected we felt to those values and how our actions aligned or maybe, you know, missed the mark a little bit with that core value. And then we give examples. So when we're talking about ourselves, you know, we can say, I, I had a lot of meetings, I was able to connect with a lot of people. And, you know, I found a new way to do it. So explore more felt like I executed it a lot this year, or this quarter. Um, And then we also give that feedback to each other. So we fill out the exact same rubric, sharing, you know, what I thought, how I saw that in Aaron, um, and, you know, what, what I thought about, what examples I have to kind of back that up. And then, you know, we switch. We, we always, it's kind of funny because only recently did we just type out like the order we go in. Like we love processes, but for some reason we, we would always just get tripped up on. Okay, I'll go first and review me and then I'll review you and then you'll review me and you'll review you. <laughs> and it like switched every quarter. But now I think we have it down to a system just because one time you typed it up and it's like, now it's real. <laughs> now it's a real thing. Now it's a process. If it's typed, it's a process. Um, this is so funny because you're so right <laughs> every time. So let's break it down too. We also, so we take each value. We have five core values. And as Jenna mentioned, it's a rubric and we give a one to five rating on that core value. So one being low, five being high. And we share why. And this is just, you know, five is like you rocked, you crushed it with your metrics. You crushed it with taking vacation time. You crushed it with, um, getting outside the box, learning, asking to do some outside, um, you know, activities or uh, extra learning. So it really takes a lot to give the five, but we've also measured the success over time. Like we've, these ebb and flow every quarter, we're not going to give fours and fives every quarter because things happen, right? Like 2020, like that whole process, I don't even want to look back at it, right? Because it was just such a different time. So for us, it's taking each core value, measuring one through on a one to five scale, how we've measured up to that core value per quarter. And we like to do it quarterly. That might be excessive for a lot of larger organizations. We always, I feel like you and I give feedback when feedback is due. I typically with everybody else on the team, we have weekly meetings. We're constantly asking, what can we start doing? What can we stop doing? What can we, how can we make things better? A lot of open communication, but it does the time that we allocate to sit down and really reflect, I think is so important um, just to continue to improve, pun intended. What do you think? Do you think quarterly has been beneficial? Yeah, I really do. I I appreciate the quarterly um, reviews because it's, it breaks it down into more digestible pieces. Yeah. Um, if you, Doing it once a year just seems like, I think I would forget all the, you know, it's easier to remember and remind yourself of the value so that you can kind of get a refresher after that review. Maybe you feel more connected to one of them or you you put in the work to make that like three and a half, uh, a four and a half or a five in the next quarter. Um, and I think that's really helpful. And I think that not only helps me professionally and grow personally, but also helps our business because we are small. And, you know, if there is an area of improvement, I'd rather know, you know, sooner rather than later so that I can make adjustments. Um, 100%. And I do, but I will agree with you that we don't just talk about this. It's more formal in the review process, of course, but we talk about these in regular meetings. And I think that that's important too, that it's not just a quarterly conversation, but it's something that's like truly embedded in our meetings. Yeah. I agree with that. So take, improve it, peeps. Take what you want from this, pull, extract. Um, But this is our process and we wanted to share it with you. So let's just, if we can, lay out the steps for the improve it, peeps today. What are the steps that you would say if you want to attract and retain top talent by using their organization's core values? 
let's try to step this out maybe in maybe five steps because five is our lucky number right now. Can we do <laughs> that, Jen? Yes. Okay. Yes. I think the first one we did already talk about, but if at all possible, bring employees into the values discussion. If you already have values, reevaluate, um, reevaluate those values, loop them in. I liked what you said about a survey, if it's a really large organization, so that you can get everyone's input um, and make sure that the people who work there currently feel aligned and on the same page with each other. Um, I think it's like step one, if possible. I know that's not always possible. Um, I think step two, when we're looking at attracting talent, is using core values language in every process, every step in Im- recruitment. So in anything that a candidate sees, a job posting, the website, your personal LinkedIn, if you are you know, talent-facing, um, your company's LinkedIn, just anything that a candidate sees, uh, like brochures at a college campus, like all of that, make sure that it's known from the very beginning that these are your values um, and that you're reiterating at that language constantly. I think number three is, and maybe I don't have five, but I'll try. Um, I think most importantly, when we're talking about, well, okay, no, I'll say number three is using that language in the interview process that we talked about, asking questions that are values focused and digging deeper into the how um, to make sure that you share the same why, I guess. Um, and then I would say step four, very important, um, is actively living out those values when no one is watching. So if inclusion is one of your values, um, then make sure that you've created an environment that is a safe space and that where people can call out microaggressions in real time or make it a point to improve what isn't living up to the core value. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's hard if you're not a leader by title, um, but trying to live out your the values internally, like per, on an interpersonal, intrapersonal level, living out the values. And if possible, you know, when you see a disconnect between words and action in the organization, I would say determine if you're in a safe environment or you feel comfortable sharing this issue and being able to speak up for change is maybe the next step there. Because I think it's easier to attract people with these, you know, fun words that make it seem like you're a really great supportive place. But to actually back it up to retain your talent is a whole other thing. And I think that's what employ I mean, candidates, job seekers, like the individual person has realized in the past two years, they can find something better if they're not feeling like there is alignment between the words and actions of a company. Oh, Jenna, you just brought us home. You took us to the house. I love that. And I wrote them down. So I will recap them for you and prove it, peeps, at the end of today's episode. But that is fan freaking tastic. You've got a five step process now. You've got a five step process by Jenna McDonald on the fly. She did, I didn't even, I don't even know if she knew that was going to happen. She just whipped it out. You're an improviser, Jenna. She says she's not. You're an improviser. Um, I love this. Okay. What's one thing you kind of said this, but I just want to hear the, the very direct answer. What's one thing you would tell leaders to stop doing when it comes to attracting, retaining talent? And one thing you would tell them to start doing? Yeah, I think, well, I think stop doing, and I'm thinking back to what I just said. Um, I think stop conflating perks with values is Ooh. something like uh, this oh. is more, I think that this is more in the attract section, but I think also in the retaining talent. Um, and I think people are getting the hang of this, but I think some companies aren't um, just understanding that values are what make or break living out core values, make or break the work experience for employees and, you know, the business impact focusing on the perks instead of, focusing on what it feels like to work here every day and what, where the opportunities are for growth and how supportive um, or how supported you'll be by your employees and what the manager interactions look like and all of that. Um, That's really what people want more than, 
you know, the the free beer on tap or like getting sent a free lunch if they're working from home. Like those are nice. And I think that's that's great to do. But if you don't have the value, the actions that are associated with values, then they're just kind of empty, empty gestures. Jenna. Preach. We need a choir time right here, Mike. Preach. Um, <laughs> I like n- exactly leave alone your ping pong table and your keg in the kitchen and give me a place where I feel like I can show up and I belong and I feel seen, heard and valued. That's it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You said it better. Yeah. Right That's there. It. No, that is no, I not it. No, I didn't. I took your words and I yes handed them. Jenna McDonald, you gave me that. I, I said, yes. And I, that is it because I truly think back. It's funny. If we think back to decades of work, like I think like, 2000 like early 2000s to like maybe 2000 basically till the pandemic it was like oh we've got foosball we've got lunch here on tuesdays we've got um you know grubhub on fridays we've got all these things we do happy hours people don't want a happy hour that's more time at work i mean they do we're gonna i'm excited actually people want that we're gonna go to new york this week just so everybody knows we're gonna see a show it's gonna be so fun um but you need those, but you need to want to be at them. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, that's it. that's it. Can I tell a fun fact to everybody listening and you? I had a job where I loved the people. I hated the management and I hated my life. <laughs> I did. I was, it sucked my soul dry. And I remember it did it to me and my colleague who was one of my best friends, my work bestie and the very first like happy hour they did, oh, we got real happy. We got so happy. She got real happy too. And it was because we were like, we deserve this because of all of the crap that we have felt in the past few months. And like, no one should feel that way. No one should feel that way. So uh, I, won't, I, I digress. Coming back to the positives, but this is really what people want now. And, and now more than ever, make them feel like they belong and it's safe and allow that to be a part of your core values. If that's, if that isn't in the core value, yes. And is meaning we are going to postpone judgment. We are going to allow people to feel seen, heard and valued. That's, that's our number one core value. Honestly, make sure if don't, you don't have to use yes. And if you're not an improviser, but let's make sure that it's in there, right? Like somewhere in there, people need to feel seen, heard, valued. Okay. So Jenna, love this question for you. What is your it or that one thing that you are bringing to this world? What's Jenna McDonald's it? Uh, I mean, so I already answered this in a previous podcast. So I'm gonna, it's gonna be a different answer. But I think it's gonna be, I don't know, I feel like maybe it should have been the same. But I don't remember what I said. Um, I think my it is around empathy. I like to think that I'm able to bring about more understanding um, and compassion, not just interpersonally, but also to help people do that for themselves. Um, I think that's my Enneagram nine ness. <laughs> and empathy is my top strength in Strengths Finder. Um, so I think, yeah, being able to just allow people to feel seen and accepted and valued, kind of what we've been talking about. I like to think that. I hope that I bring that into every conversation I have with another person um, so that they can leave feeling better or feeling understood or having felt they mattered. Yes. And I will say I would put that next to your face in a dictionary. Jenna McDonald. If there was the word empathy, there would be a picture of Jenna McDonald next to Obama. No, I'm just kidding. I yes. love. <laughs> yes. Yes, Jenna, that is perfect. And you are, you are such an empathetic person. That's why you are Improve It. She is the it. She is the it. So let's play have a little fun. Let's end this on a high note. You know, fail, yeah, lightning rounds. I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna do this. No mistakes, only gifts. I'm gonna say a series of very fast questions. I want you to respond with just one word answers. If you say more than one word, I'm gonna give you a big fail, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like an old man, the old man at Six Flags commercial. All right, here we go. Are you ready for the fail, yeah, lightning round, Jenna McDonald? Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. One word to describe your early career. Unexpected. <laughs> One word to describe where you are now in your career. Growing. One word to describe your conversational style. Inviting. One word to describe your work from home fashion style. I'm going to say two. Um, Huga chic. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. Fam, yeah. But also, wait, what is the word? Huga. H-Y-G-G-E. What? what does that mean? Do I need to know this word? No, it's okay. It's like the Danish. Like, I hope I'm explaining this right. I apologize to anyone who is more of an expert in this. It's like the Danish lifestyle of coziness and comfort. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like, you know, like if you put on fuzzy socks and drink some tea, that's kind of like huga or like okay, sitting okay. by a fireplace. So yeah, but like, it's kind of what you say. It's like yoga pants on the bottom. That's like the huga. But I'm wearing like business top, which is exactly what's happening today. <laughs> okay. All right. Keep me young. Keep me young and fresh. Okay. And then one word to describe this interview. Fun. Yeah. One fail. Yeah. One fail. Yeah. But you nailed it. Okay. Tell Improve It Peeps where they can find you if they want to connect with Jenna McDonald. I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I, you know, with the kids, I'm on LinkedIn. <laughs> You can find other podcasts. I've been on a couple of podcast episodes. So you can find other episodes that I've been featured on um, for the Improve It podcast in Ravenswood. <laughs> <I think that's- laughs> Ravenswood, Chicago. You can find her. She'll, she'll drop a pin on the show notes and then you can find her. Um, okay. No, I will link to those other episodes. I will find them and I will share them with the Improve It peeps because Jenna is full of greatness. And I got to say, Jenna, you are the core of what we do here at Improve It. You see what I did there? I always tell people and you that you are Improve It. So it's been an honor of my career to be able to watch you grow, define our business, and lead it to success every single day. So thank you for being you and embodying in what we stand for every single day. And I feel like we reconnected with our core values, which was your intention. I feel, I definitely feel reconnected. It's really, it's really great to reflect and go back. Um, So thanks for having me on this episode. Thanks for coming. Big hugs. (laughs) Hugs. (laughs) Hugs. I I guess we probably will talk to you in like five minutes. So talk to you in five minutes. (laughs) Okay. Bye. Bye. What a lady, what a Jenna, what a time. Jenna never ceases to amaze me. She, I talk to her 800 times a day, and she's one of those people that just brings sunshine to your life. So I hope that not only you got a little ray of sun, but you also took some great wisdom from this conversation. So I just wanted to use this time too to recap those five steps to attract and retain top talent. And literally, she came up with those on the fly. So I'm loving where she w- she went with that. She's an improviser, folks. So number one, make sure that you include people in your core values process. Number two, make sure that those core values are a part of every single thing that candidates see in the hiring process. And then number three, use that language about your core values in the interview process itself. Number four, make sure that you are actively living out those core values. And number five, as she mentioned, speak up for change. If you notice that some of the core values aren't being demonstrated, speak up for change. So here's what I want you to take away. You know, I like to give you a tangible. How can you incorporate your core values into your hiring and talent retention process? That is a question I want you to answer. Talk to other leaders within your organization. But how can you do that? Really sit and reflect. Take out a piece of paper. Write down the answer. How can you incorporate your core values into your hiring and talent retention process? I want you to think about it. Improve it, peeps. You know what I'm going to say. Keep failing. Keep improving. Because the world needs that 
special, special it that only you can bring. We'll see you next time here on the Improve It Podcast. I am so proud of you and you should be proud of you too. Bye. Hey friends, thanks for tuning in to Improve It. I am so happy you were along for the ride. If you enjoyed this show, head on over to iTunes to leave us a five-star review and subscribe to the show so you never miss an episode. New episodes drop every Wednesday. Now, if you're really feeling today's show and you've improved it even just a little bit, please take a screenshot and tag me at Keeping It Real Deal on Instagram and share it in your stories. I'll see you next week, but I I want to leave you with this thought. What did you improve today and how will that help your future successful self? Think about it. I am rooting for you and the world needs that special it that only you can bring. See you next time. <laughs>